In this uh, video, we're going to move to the center of this and take a look at some of the different kinds of chemical agents that are out there. And again, you can see that we can go to varying levels from disinfection to sterilization, and we can also use a lot of these on animate objects for um, antiseptic kinds of treatments. And one of the things I will point out is that when we look at these chemical disinfecting agents, um, what people have found is that using a single one by itself can be effective, although it doesn't look like it here. Even after two minutes, the um, death curve, you don't see a very large reduction in the number of um, bacteria cells, but maybe this is really effective against something like an envelope virus in reducing the load there. But if you start working your way up, you can see that we have different slopes for the different kinds of chemicals but when we start getting into these mixtures of these different chemicals um, you're going to see a much much greater slope indicating that mixtures of certain types of chemicals are going to be more effective um, than any one chemical used by itself and this is a property known as synergism um, we also see this with antibiotic cocktails that are out there so we'll take a look at some of these different kinds of chemical disinfecting agents just briefly because um, they're pretty straightforward in terms of their mode of action and how they're working. Um, and a lot of you have already um, filled out and submitted your chemical disinfectant worksheet there. And so I'm just going to go through a lot of these ones here. Um, we can look at different kinds of chemicals and group them based on their mode of activity. And an easy one to do is to disrupt membranes or protein structures in cells. And this can be done by something like using heat um, and that'll disrupt the membranes by causing them to fall apart or denature your proteins but we can also do a similar thing using chemicals and here we can see two examples of organic molecules that are going to be able to have this effect on cells that can actually um, reduce their growth or kill them off and both of these are um, carbon compounds that have a functional group, a hydroxyl here. The phenols are going to come in these ring-like structures, and your alcohols are just going to be these linear hydrocarbon chains. But again, both of them do have this polar hydroxyl group. And this is basically going to insert itself into a membrane and cause it to fall apart or to disrupt your um, higher levels of structures to your proteins. But again, with both of these, they can have some irritating side effects. The phenols definitely a lot more because um, they could actually um, cause your skin to dissolve with the proteins there if you run into a carbolic acid or a phenol like this. Some of these are going to be used in different types of disinfectants out there um, that we would tend to use on inanimate objects as opposed to on your skin for a lot of them. The alcohols tend to be less irritating, but if you drink something like isopropanol, it can cause um, some damage to your nervous system out there. Um, and some of them can even cause you to become blind. Um, ethanol, some of us are more familiar than others about the effects of um, exposure to that. And again, um, a lot of alcohols are used in these tinctures where um, you mix up an alcohol with the different kinds of chemicals that you're using, and both of them together work more effective. Um, other chemicals that we can find that disrupt membranes, but they do it through a slightly different mechanism. Still an organic kind of molecule out there with your hydrocarbon, but here you have this long hydrocarbon chain here. And again, if you look at this, you don't see any oxygen or hydroxyl group on the surfactant right there. And what these guys are is basically surface acting agents. So things like detergents or what are known as quats, because they have this um, highly charged ammonium salt right there. And you can see there's a little positive charge and another one right there. And these will insert themselves into the membrane and disrupt the structure, um, resulting in the cell rupturing or possibly denaturing your protein. Um, one kind of um, chemical that we do find out there um, is known as a bisbiguanate, and this is a cation, and you can see again it's got a little bit of a charge associated with this, but this is something that you could find um, in um, detergents used to scrub your hands for surgery, but also you can find them in um, mouthwashes or aura rinses that are out there. And these are basically going to work by disrupting the membranes in your cells and the proteins there. Um, if you look at other um, groups of chemicals out there, the halogens and the peroxygens are ones that are actually going to cause oxidative damage. So you um, result in death of the cells by basically peppering them 
with damage to the organic molecules because you are oxidizing the chemicals that are out there. Um, if you have the right kinds of chemicals in the cells, they can actually resist oxidative damage um, if they have antioxidants there. Um, but if you pepper them with enough of these things, think like bleach, you're hitting them with a huge amount of oxidative damage from all the bleach that is getting in there, and that can basically overwhelm those cells and they won't be able to fix the oxidative damage. But when you look at this, it does have some irritating side effects. Um, put your hand in some bleach and you can feel your skin um, getting all slippery as the epidermal cells are actually um, going through damage from the bleach solution. Um, you can find different kinds of halogens out there bromine that is often used in hot tubs and then over here you can see different forms of um, iodine containing chemicals that are out there um, and the peroxygens down here ethylene oxide is a really good example or hydrogen peroxide or ozone these guys are really really strong oxidizing chemicals and this little figure over here actually shows you what's known as a chemiclave it's the equivalent of an autoclave but instead of using high temperature you actually use gaseous versions of these chemicals so imagine making a hydrogen peroxide gas that is pumped in here with these um, surgical instruments and the gas can penetrate all over the place and oxidize any organic molecules that are um, remaining on that surgical instrument to actually sterilize it given a long enough time or exposure there. Um, if we also look at some other kinds of chemicals that can interfere with organic molecules in cells, the alkylating agents, things like formaldehyde or glutaraldehyde, these guys will actually cause a chemical reaction between functional groups in your organic biomolecules. So effectively, you're going to glue them together. So think about if you have a cell that needs DNA polymerase to replicate its DNA, when you expose it to this alkylating agent, you could actually cause that um, polymerase enzyme to be glued to your DNA. And if the cells cannot replicate their DNA, those cells are going to die off. Um, with these guys, a short exposure tends to be disinfecting as you kill off the more sensitive cells. But a much, much longer exposure is going to result in sterilization there. And then the bottom thing that we can see here is heavy metals can actually be used to interfere um, with the growth of cells because they disrupt your proteins. Um, and if you think about your enzymes, the majority of them are going to have protein as part of the enzyme structure. Well, a metal ion can displace a cofactor that the cells are using. So instead of magnesium, you have a different ion there. And this is where our copper sulfate is a good example because it actually displaces the magnesium that is at the center um, of your chlorophyll molecule. So if you don't have magnesium and it gets displaced and replaced with copper, your chlorophyll shuts down and this can actually be used to get rid of algae and pools just by throwing in some copper sulfate there. Um, for us, we like to use um, silver nitrates. It's going to often be found in topical creams, and they also are now starting to put these into bandage dressings um, to reduce the chances of infection, on, um, especially on burn victims that are out there. And so when you look at these, these um, ionic forms of the metals are often going to be bacteriostatic, um, and it'll have a really good effect on the cells in the general region there, but because we're so much larger, you're, um, any damage that occurred to you would just be in that localized region where the infection is occurring. Um, the last thing we can look at with these chemical methods to interfere with growth are some more esoteric ones. And one of them is a supercritical fluid fluid that is out there. And here you can see an example of using some CO2 that is at a certain pressure and temperature. And that carbon dioxide can be used to clean things, but it can also be used to disinfect and sterilize. And that CO2 is able to penetrate your cells. And when it gets in there, it is able to um, dissolve in the um, cytoplasmic fluids, the water there, and it forms carbonic acid. And then that pH is going to have that effect on the organic molecules. Again, um, your proteins are sensitive to um, pH, and if you make it really, really acidic in there with the carbonic acid, that'll denature those proteins and disrupt those structures. Um, the last thing that we'll look at here is this ability of different kinds of 
um, food preservatives that are used. And there are a variety of different synthetic chemicals like um, sodium benzoate, propionic acid that um, we can find out there, um, sulfurs and also nitrites that are added to different kinds of foods um, as preservatives to really inhibit the growth of microbes. Um, and this is one of those kind of interesting things. If it is having an effect on the microbes, what effect is it having on us? And for us, it might not have an effect because it does not get through um, the lumen of your intestines when you digest your food. So the chemical might not have an effect on you because it doesn't get into your tissues. Or maybe it's in such a small amount that it inhibits the microbes in your food, but there's so many cells on you, it's not going to have a big effect. And this is something that we really don't know the long-term effects but there are some natural food preservatives out there that can be um, purified here we have an example of a bacteria called lactococcus lactis that you'll find in cheese and these guys make a protein that can actually disrupt cell walls of other bacteria and so when people identified this in the lab they were able to actually purify this and then they can add it back to food and natamycin is actually purified from um, a bacteria called streptomyces that makes the antibiotic streptomycin but this is actually an antifungal that can be added to various dairy products